Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning on this third Sunday in the season of Advent. We'll begin our service with our first hymn, hymn 302. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Jesus Christ and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen I'm sorry we'll now do the lighting of the Advent candle We light three Advent candles remembering Jesus, the light of the world. He came to defeat the Prince of Darkness. We remember Jesus, who came in answer to his people's prayers. John proclaimed him the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We hear his call to see the light. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Through your word and spirit, may our souls be
Our first reading for this morning is the Old Testament reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, the prophecy of our Savior. The wilderness and the desert will be glad. The wastelands of the Arabah will rejoice and blossom like a crocus. It will bloom lavishly, and there will be great joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. It will be excellent like Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make the shaky knees steady. Tell those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not be afraid. Look, your God will come with vengeance. With God's own retribution, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be unplugged. The crippled will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute will sing for joy. Waters will flow in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The burning sand will become a pool and on the thirsty ground there will be strings, springs of water. There will be grass, reeds, and rushes where the haunts of jackals once lay. A highway will be there, a road that will be called the Holy Way. The impure will not walk there. It will be reserved for those who walk in that Holy Way. Wicked fools will not wander onto it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious animal go up on it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. Then those ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with a joyful shout, and everlasting joy will crown their heads. Happiness and joy will overtake them. Sorrow and sighing will flee away. The word of the Lord. Amen. We'll now join in singing Psalm 146. second reading for this morning is taken from the book of James, chapter 5. Therefore, brothers, be patient until the coming of the Lord. 
See how the farmer waits for the valuable harvest from the ground, patiently waiting for it till it receives the early and late rain. You be patient too. Strengthen your hearts because the coming of the Lord is near. Do not complain about one another, brothers, so that you will not be judged. Look, the judge is standing at the doors. Brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering with patient endurance. See, we consider those who endure to be blessed. You have heard of the patient endurance of Job and have seen what the Lord did in the end, because the Lord is especially compassionate and merciful. The word of the Lord. Please rise as we sing the gospel acclamation. St. Matthew chapter 11. While John was in prison, he heard about the things Christ was doing. He sent two of his disciples to ask him, Are you the coming one, or should we wait for someone else? Jesus answered them, Go report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the poor. Blessed is the one who does not take offense at me. As these two were leaving, Jesus began to talk to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? No, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So what did you go out to see? Prophet? Yes, I tell you, and he is much more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Amen, I tell you, among those born of women there has not appeared anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning is the Gospel lesson. Take from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. While John was in prison, he heard about the things Christ was doing. He sent two of his disciples to ask him, Are you the coming one, or should we wait for someone else? Jesus answered them, Go, report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the poor. Blessed is the one who does not take offense at me. As these two were leaving, Jesus began to talk to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? No, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and he is much more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Amen, I tell you, among those born of women there has not appeared anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. In the name of our Savior, dear children of God, why are we doing this? Why are we preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus? You look around your world today and there are most people are not preparing for the celebration of Jesus' birth. A lot of people are preparing for a fat man to slide down their chimney. Others are shopping and shopping for good food and good drinks so that they can have their festivals and parties. Still others are planning the Christmas vacation. If you live in Minnesota, they are planning to go south for the warmth. And still others are just looking forward to some quiet time at home. To sit around the tree and enjoy a few gifts. So why are we doing this? Is Jesus who he says he is? Are you willing to stake your eternal life on that answer? John the Baptist sends his disciples to Jesus with a question that we are going to stand right next to them this morning and ask the very same one. We're told, they asked him, are you, coming, are you the coming one or should we wait for someone else? As we prepare for Christmas and, and we go through all the decorating and all the, the special services and all these different kinds of things, maybe questions like that have run through your mind. Maybe not just like that, but maybe you go, why are we going to church again? We know the story. This is old stuff. Let's forget about it. Let's do something else. What makes Jesus so important? Well, this morning we find out. This morning we're going to stand next to these disciples and listen as Jesus answers the question, are you the one? And he says to them, stop and think for a moment. What do you see? And at the same time, what do you hear? Especially from John the Baptist. Now, maybe just to clear everything up, and I'm not really clearing anything up with this, but if you do any reading around this text in some kind of commentary, you're going to run across this idea or the question of who's really asking this question. Is it John the Baptist? Or is it doing it for his disciples. 
And the controversy, if you want to call it a controversy, revolves around this idea. John the Baptist is now sitting in prison, and he's been languishing there for quite some time. Is John, by himself, in his own mind, starting to have doubts about what he has been doing and who he's been pointing to? Or is John the Baptist rock solid, Jesus is the Savior of the world? Or what's going on here are these disciples watching as their leader, John, is now sitting in prison and this Jesus guy is becoming more and more popular and they're starting to wonder, what's this all about? Who is this guy? But whoever the question is for, or let's say, wherever the question is coming from, we can be very thankful that it was asked. Maybe not because of the question, but because of Jesus' answer. The answer is very clear. And an answer that can make us very sure about what this is all about. Jesus' answer is this. Go report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the poor. Now how does that answer the question? Well, again, we have to let scripture teach us about itself. And if you go into another section of the Gospels, Jesus was posed a very similar question. The Jews gathered around Jesus asking, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. If you are the Messiah, if you are the Christ, if you are the coming one, if you are the Savior, and Jesus must have been sick of hearing those kinds of questions. And Jesus, answering these Jews, said, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I am going to do in my Father's name testify about me. See, Jesus pointed them to the very same thing he points John's disciples, and that is the works that Jesus did. And the reason that he did that, the reason that is so important, is that if you go back into the Old Testament and you begin to read all the promises concerning the Messiah, God gave them all different kinds of signs, all different kinds of markers that they could say, aha, he's doing this. He's fulfilling scripture. This must be the Messiah. Because remember, God warned them there were going to be a lot of people coming and saying, I am the Christ, I am the Messiah, I am your Savior. And how are they and how are we supposed to know? Because we're supposed to know the Scriptures. See, even in our first lesson for this morning, we were told... A number of the things that were going to happen around the coming Savior that Jesus points to. We, we read in Isaiah 35, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unplugged. The crippled will leap like the deer, and the tongue of the mute will sing for joy. <laughs> Sound familiar? A little bit later in Isaiah, we read about the Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the afflicted. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release for those who are bound. See, Jesus didn't stand in front of these disciples and say, I am the Savior of the world, I am the Messiah, and you just have to believe me. He could have. He was God. And then he didn't. In all humility, he, he points to the miracles. He points to the, the works that he did, which are signs given in Scripture 
about who the Messiah would be. See, the writer to the Hebrews ties it all up when he says, how will we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? First the message was spoken by the Lord, then it was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it with signs and wonders, various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. Jesus, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? Are you the promised one of God? Jesus simply says, open your eyes and look. Go into the scriptures and, and learn what the Messiah was supposed to do and then look at everything that I am doing and you'll see that I am fulfilling scripture. In fact, he tells us the scriptures testify about me. But Jesus doesn't leave us just with that. He now goes on and he points us to probably the, the biggest marker, the biggest sign that God had sent, and he points us to John the Baptist. And he says, as you listen to John, what did John say? He, he first wanted them to think about John. He, he first wanted them to think about what, in a matter of speaking, they wanted to hear. He said, when you went out to see John, what you go out there to see? what'd you go out there for? Did you want to see a reed blowing in the wind? Did you want to hear a man who uh, licked his finger and said, oh, what's the popular opinion of the day? I'll tell you that. That'll make you happy. No, oh, Jesus said, you don't go out for that. Did you go out there to see a man dressed in fine clothes? A man who could be bought? A man who could be influenced, you know, you slide a little money under the table for him, you give him something nice, and he'll tell you whatever you want to hear, he'll tell you whatever you want him to say. No, you didn't go out there for that. You went out there to hear a prophet. And not just any prophet, Jesus says, a very special prophet. A prophet who is part of prophecy. See, Jesus points them to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. He says, look, and, and there we read, Look, I am sending my messenger. He will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple. See, John was the forerunner of the Savior. And as the forerunner, he was again one of those incredible big signs that said, look and understand. This is the one who's standing there and saying, Jesus is the one that you need to follow, not me. But Jesus goes on. He says, amen, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not appeared anyone greater than John the Baptist. That's quite a compliment coming from God. No one greater. Why? Because no one in this world has an important job like John. He came for one purpose, only one purpose. And that was to prepare God's people for the coming of the Savior. John was this huge flashing red light that everybody around him should have said, listen to him, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. All the other Old Testament prophets could say, he's coming, he's coming. They didn't say real specifically when and how, but he's coming, he's coming. And suddenly here's John that says, he's right there. 
Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. There isn't a more important job in this world than for John to point out who Jesus is. He's God. He's the Messiah. He's the Christ. And yet, Jesus says, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. How does that work? John is the greatest there ever was. And yet, whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John had come to serve God's people. His ministry was very short. But he had come so that everybody would know that Jesus is Christ, Savior of the world. And if you're listening, you repent and turn to Jesus as your Savior from sin. And when the Holy Spirit works that in you, think what happens. You become a child of God. All of your sins are forgiven. You have the promise of God of eternal life in heaven. You are an heir of God and God owns everything. Can it be greater than that? The greatest human being that ever lived serves you. as he continually, through the words of the scriptures, points to Jesus as your Savior from sin. And when you listen, and when you see, you are a child of God. There's nothing greater than that. There's a lot of pressures around us to look at Christmas as time off from work, time for a vacation, time to have parties, time to wait for the fat man to come down the chimney. A lot of pressures to do a lot of things, to do think a lot of things, to make a lot of things. This is, oh, this is so important because why? We do it every Christmas. And then we get to the end of Christmas and we're disappointed. We're depressed. Because Christmas didn't go the way I wanted it to. So and so couldn't be there. I didn't get the gift I wanted. It all went so fast. And we missed. We missed what it's really about. It's the birth of your Savior. It's God incarnate taking on human flesh. Coming to live and die and pay for your sins. If there was anything in this world worth preparing for, worth getting ready for, it's that. Two weeks. We get to truly celebrate. A birthday. Not your birthday, not my birthday, nobody's birthday. But God's birthday. Your Savior's birthday. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we now place the offering on the altar, and then we will pray. Our humble offerings we now bring to you, dear Jesus, Savior, King. Accept them, small as they may be, and by your Spirit help us see. Whatever work needs yet be done, so others may learn that heaven is one, is work with, with each, which each of us must do, and what's done for others is done for you. Amen. We pray. Come, dear Savior, we long for your appearing. Come to cheer us with your promises as you once cheered your ancient people throughout their long night of waiting and watching. Come to restore our hope. Rouse us from the slumber of despair. Lift our hearts from petty earthbound goals and direct our eyes above from where you will soon come to make all things right again. Forgive us for the shameful way we have dishonored you and the shabby way we have dealt with one another. Through your mighty words, stir up in us a ceaseless yearning to give ourselves to others as you have given yourself to us. We pray for those enduring great sorrow, for those undergoing spiritual trial, and for those whose restless hearts have no knowledge of your coming. Comfort, strengthen, and illumine them with the sweet peace born of your love. Be with us in our communities, lead us to seek the welfare of others, and make us willing to contribute to the improvement of our neighborhoods, towns, and cities so that people of diverse cultures and differing talents may enjoy peace, justice, and good order. Give us good health and positive attitudes as we go forward in life, and give us courage to face whatever the future holds, knowing that it and we are in your hands. Merciful Lord and Savior, you have promised to be with your believers everywhere and in all circumstances of life. We ask that you be with Loretta Lanz as she recovers from surgery, May the assurance of your abiding presence and loving care comfort her. Renew her strength that soon she can come home and continue her Christian life before you. We also ask that you continue to be with Isaiah Randall as he goes through treatments for cancer. Work through the medicine, the doctors, the nurses, and allow them to be a blessing to Isaiah. We ask that you heal him and give him strength in the days ahead. Comfort and sustain him with your presence and keep him close to you. Lord of life, we marvel again at the wonderful way in which you bring children into the world. Accept our thanks for holding your protecting hand over Maya Peshan and Desiree Bono in childbirth, and for bringing joy to Ozzy and Maya and Mitch and Desiree with the gift of their children, Penelope Ray Ann Peshan and Brantley David Bono. Bless these children, protect them from every danger of body and soul, and give their parents the love, wisdom, and means to care for these children. Go with us into our world and help us to do everything to your glory. Help us with your words and actions. Share with our world that a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. 
our Savior from sin. Amen. I ask you now to please rise as we continue on page 183 with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared when he called people to repentance and pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. to receive thanks and praise from all people. You created the world and all who live in it, and in your mercy you saved us. We give thanks to you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Though in very nature God, he took the nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin and redeemed us from its curse and penalty. He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the kingdom of grace and glory. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood, and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins, and fill us with the hope of a new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
please rise. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look at you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning uh, to each one of you. Uh, one, two, well, I have two bits of information here, but um, the first one is uh, many of you might remember a uh, former member of ours, Laverne Putz. Um, he passed away this last week. I do not know when his funeral will be. If you are interested, I would guess, looking at the letter I received, uh, go to Huff Funeral on, online and they should have the dates and times on that uh, whenever that information becomes available. But he was 101 years old uh, and uh, now sits in heaven. Uh, finally, a letter. Dear members of St. John's, grace to you in Christ Jesus. It has been such a great blessing to me and my family over these last few weeks to spend time in prayer and discussion over the two calls extended to me in Hartford and in Lewiston. It has also been so spiritually uplifting to hear about the ministry of another congregation and consider how my work might fit and assist you in carrying out those goals. After discussing with people in both Hartford and Lewiston, I'm sure that I could serve either congregation joyfully, while at the same time, either congregation can also survive and thrive without me. It has also become clear to me that at this time, it is best for my family and me to remain in Hartford and for me to continue serving as pastor to peace. Therefore, I am returning the call you issued to me in full confidence that God has a man in mind to serve you and to assist you in carrying out your gospel-centered, mission-oriented goals and objectives. I pray that he sends you that man soon. I will continue to keep you and your ministry in my prayers and wish you God's richest blessings, uh, Pastor Jeremy Husby. Uh, so the pastor call has been declined. Remember, we do have a call meeting this Wednesday night uh, for a principal. And uh, because of the uh, over Christmas vacation idea hiatus that there be no pastor calls, we probably will not extend another pastor call into the new year. So as soon as that date becomes available, um, I will let you know what that is and we'll go from there. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you.